Okay, something else we gotta fix. Hey, how you doing? It's been a few days. Dad has been running the strip till bar like crazy. Uh, we had a little problem with the licensing. We were running on Waz SF1 and uh, we needed RTK, obviously. It was getting way off. We didn't know what was going on. That was a problem. So he came out and fixed that. He's got the 93 done, the 120 done, a 40 over here done, a 60, and he's over in Henry running now. So I just let him take off with the strip till bar. Like I said, it's been a few days. I've actually been working on my house trying to get it onto the market because as soon as snow falls, nobody buys a house. So that's just, it had to be done. Anyway, it's pretty well done now. So I've been, I'm at the farm today and uh, I've got a lot of work to do, honestly. He was gonna sit and let me take over the strip toe bar, but I said, no, just, you've been running it, just go. I got corn to clean up, combines to blow off, money bar to get ready sprayer's got to be done it's just uh, there's so much there's so much to do so let's just get into it i'm going to go ahead and start this sprayer get it warming up a little bit and then we got to get this out uh we're going to park this in the other shed facing out because we've got a guy coming oh no way somehow i was able to start that with the neutral alarm on so that's good. I don't know why, but this sprayer, it is, it's honestly weird. I just, I don't know if you noticed, but when I got in here, I turned the key on and the neutral alarm came on. So I immediately tried starting it. Didn't even let it, didn't let it warm up at all. And uh, fired right up, runs like brand new. Now, if I wait for that wait to start light come off and start it, it just sounds miserably bad. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I ought to just, just fired up immediately. Okay, that's done. Now we're probably gonna get the cart put away just because we don't need it anymore. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Tell me it's out of, <coughs> is it out of fuel? <clears throat> Okay, something else we gotta fix. Oh, goodness. oh yeah, I forgot. The hood don't stay open either. Because the shocks are trashed. Well, I suppose we'll check the fuel on that thing. I think it's got fuel. I don't know why it's not starting. I, I really don't. Oh, and Alan. Alan, Alan. Oh, look at that. First time. Fuel is running out of it. It should just start. <laughs> Fire it up. Beautiful. Yeah, with the clutch jumping like that, I'm probably gonna get killed back here. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Putting this cart away is gonna be really fun. <laughs> oh my, somebody's gonna die. And might be okay there. Whoa! Definitely good there. Yeah, what do you mean? Just pull forward a bit. Ah, never mind. I got it. Dad has blessed me with the opportunity to put this cart away myself. While the... Ooh, while it's jerking around like this, this ought to be just... <laughs> ought to be fun. <coughs> Here we go. I think I just hit puberty. 
I think the key is going to be just never slow down. I think I can just get it in the shed going this quick. Well, even though this isn't really functional, I may as well throw some fuel in it. I don't, Dad was hoping to get the ripping done and the ammonia on with this thing. I just, I don't see it making the fall. I really don't. He doesn't either now. <laughs> it's just, it's so bad. It's no fun to run. It, I just, it's gonna take a crap in the field somewhere. So anyway, we're gonna try and put the hammer strap on the 7600 here so that I can get the ammonia bar out with it. Because I'm gonna put the ammonia bar through the back of the shed here if I try and hook up with that thing. It's just gonna shove it through the back side, so. Well, Dad's got a plan in mind other than a hammer strap for the 7600 to get the ammonia bar on. So we'll see if it works. Moment of truth, I suppose. Dad is moving the combine out into the field. That way I can blow it off later. I'm getting this 305 the heck out of the way in case it doesn't start again. I gotta hook up the hydraulics, let the ammonia bar down. And then we should be good to start the day. Chicken feed there, geez. Quite a bit of grain in there. It's gotta be pushed back away from the wall here. Let's try this the easy way. Oh, well that took a lot longer than I thought it would. I only got this east dryer done. West dryer, I still gotta clean underneath, but Unfortunately, I need the bucket for the telehandler, which is in the old shed. And uh, we parked the sprayer there this morning, and the guy is here working on it. So I really can't get in there, because most of that stuff is pretty much mold. And I don't want to clean underneath it until after I clean out the west dryer. And th there's just, yeah, I just... I need to get some things uh, moved around here before I can really do anything there. So that's at least a pretty good start. I'm just going to go ahead and get to cleaning the combine off for now. Get these sides opened up. This is a problem. <clears throat> we definitely need to get that tube extension here that comes out and blows the air underneath or on top of this tail fin here because that's annoying. And that is, that's been cleaned several times this fall. It just piles up that often. Okay, the rest of it just needs washed. Anyway, I am headed to Henry because Dad is filling the strip to bar now and that will finish both wagons off to where they will be empty and they can be moved. Now, we're gonna get both those wagons moved over north to a 120 acre field. 
and he needs his pickup there as well so that when he finishes stripping the field in Henry, he can just drive the strip tow bar over to the field and he's got everything there and he can come home. That is the plan, but for right now, I'm gonna go take over just filling the strip toe bar because he has got other priorities he's got to take care of for a little bit right now and then uh, by the time I finish filling and maybe moving one wagon he'll be done with whatever he's doing and uh, yeah we can get him situated it's all done then I can come home and hopefully just sit on that ammonia bar till it's done I don't know if he actually parked this correctly he may have just pulled up and left I have no idea but we're gonna try Looking pretty good. Usually I'm the one running this thing all fall, so it's it's a little weird. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be in it. I actually enjoy this job. He's got quite a bit done. I don't know if you can see that, but he's got about 15, 20 acres left, I'd say. Now this stuff has been loading insanely slow because uh, of an oil that they're using. They, they got to oil the DAF because it's insanely dusty. And so because of that oil, it's been slowing up our loading process by a lot. And so uh, you got to kind of keep an eye on it, make sure that it's not overloading this auger because that sucks a, a lot, it's majorly. Um, so we can't load as fast. Dad was saying that it's taking him about an hour and a half to load, which is insane. Uh, but I think, I don't know if he's tried it yet. But if I come into the tractor here, I think I can just kind of mess with the uh, hydraulics here a little bit. Maybe I'm wrong, but why has he only got this set to 50 seconds? I thought four was fan. Check this out quick. That's not it. Is it in here? It's not it either. Here we go. Number four. No, number three is fan. No. Confused. Number three is fold. Four is fan. What does he got going on here? He's got these switched differently. Anyway, what I was what I was thinking is that maybe I could increase the hydraulic pressure on that auger. It's tied in with the fan. We just have that little pull down and push up knob that diverts the hydraulics. And uh, so I didn't know maybe I could increase the hydraulic pressure to give that um, auger a little more oomph. But that orbital motor on the top there is pretty small. So I don't know if it would do anything anyway, but why not? Why not change the flow rate up a little more? Speed it up maybe to 5.4 or something. Let's try it. Seems to be feeding in a lot better. Certainly putting a heck of a lot more in. Oh yeah. Usually when I'm loading, I kind of like to check some of this stuff over, make sure it's not loose. That one's loose, see? Right there. We got an impact in the truck, but I'll go ahead and finish loading and just remember to get those. Now with this fertilizer, typically you want to be wearing a respirator and gloves and all that stuff, but I'm not really handling it right now. And uh, as far as the respirator goes, it's very windy and it is actually blowing all of that stuff away from me. So I'm not too worried about it right now. Now I'm going to be putting the gloves on because I'm going to need to shuffle that stuff around in those tanks to get as much as they possibly hold. Basically, I'm just going to be shifting this fertilizer over to the corners as best as I can to get as much as I can in them. Because I can only do so much with this spout. Isn't it weird how uh, these little fish tank pebbles are the food for next year's crop? Kind of my tractor thoughts. I mean, look at that. That's pretty neat.
Well, it's not looking good. I may have to shut the wagon off. Oh, that may be a good sign. It's gonna be close. Okay, you gonna make it? Yeah, I think you're fine. Oopsies. Swing this guy around. Grab the bucket. Now before I forget, I'm gonna go dump this bushel basket full of the fertilizer that was in the boot, but I've got to change back those hydraulics so that the fan's not running too high. Totally full? Totally full. And then the front is? It's pretty well full. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to... How much is typically in the front? 4,000? 3,800? 3, 3, somewhere in there. There's probably 3,200 in there. 3,100. You had it 5.04, I think. Leave it there. Uh, I increased the, I shut the fan off and then went in there and increased the flow rate. You figured out that I moved the fan to three. Yes. Well, now I, I got to put it back to four. Why? That is on the phone with the fertilizer salesman. He just, uh, just called. So, uh, they're going to get us some fertilizer tendered to the new farm. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up those bolts and then we can continue our conversation on why he had to change the hydraulics over. Because I was certainly confused, as you could tell. Uh, unfortunately, the impact is dead. So I'm going to have to use a breaker bar. Not a big deal. Your impact is dead, by the way. Well, it probably um, is after I tightened some up this morning and then I put that U-bolt in. Gotcha. I, uh, why did you have to change the... Oh, that one's loose, too. Why did you have to change the, the hydraulics? The, every time, every time you go up and down, it says it was popping up high fan speed. Yep. And I thought I didn't know if it was the tractor or the sensor or what was going on. Gotcha. So I switched it from four to three, still doing it. So it's not the tractor; it's the sensor or firing somewhere. <coughs> but now with the wings on four, yes, they start folding as you're going across the field. <laughs> so I got to switch it back. I see. Yeah, we need to get those pins to keep the wings from folding yeah. um yeah no i figured that out because i seen four was set to 50 seconds and i was like well that don't make any sense and i know fan was four but i figured that out but anyway what i did is i just shut the fan off put it to the auger and then i went in there and upped it to about five and a half hydraulic flow pressure and i straight up and down was loading it the whole time so, well, I think it's better on three than it is four because of that issue. But that could be too. Yeah. But when I first started it, before I did it, it was slugging it. I couldn't. And so I went in there, changed the flow, and it took it the whole time. It didn't even try to slug. So, okay. As you can tell, I loaded it pretty quick. This is still from Helen, I imagine. Yes, this is the last. Yeah, I just I loaded that. I, I got here. Jess was over the hill. You guys were I over see. the hill. Yeah. So I didn't get here. I don't know how long you guys are gone, but... 30 minutes. Yeah, I got that loaded and... I'll take off, let's go get these to haul, or long ones. Yeah. You gotta back up. Okay. Um, yeah, and don't let me forget all your... Accoutrements. Accoutrements, yes. I told them 10 minutes, which they aren't gonna be there that quick. <laughs> we aren't gonna be there that quick, so... Okay. Okay, so that timed out perfectly. Like I said, this morning, Dad, it was taking about an hour and a half to fill that strip toe bar. And he couldn't figure it out you know obviously uh the guy that was tendering it to us was like no we oil it because it's super dusty that dap and so it's rough on the augers i mean it just takes more oomph and uh so i mean that just that just proved uh just throw a little more flow to it and it'll handle it because i just loaded that in less than 30 minutes so that's what we're gonna have to do I guess to get that thing filled and we may want to do that anyway because there are times where you just you're loading and out of nowhere it just slugs and you can't get to it fast enough to shut it off and you got a plugged auger so 
that may just be something that we got to do every time we load and maybe with the dryer stuff we can load even quicker which would be awesome if we could load in like 10 15 minutes oh that's what i'm hoping with a conveyor i mean we could probably load that thing in eight minutes that would just be the bee's knees so we're going to look into some stuff like that i don't know how much it is for a conveyor to hook onto a wagon like this but speeding up our load time would that's that's what really kills us off topic but we are headed now to the new farm dad and i both are carrying wagons that way he can leave his pickup there and he'll hop in with me and then i'll bring him back to the strip toe bar and then i can go home so well back to the farm anyway oh my goodness what a night this is the most depressing part about uh winter Uh oh, yes, 5.30, it is pitch black. So all my other shenanigans have uh, gone to the wayside for now. We'll finish those in the morning as far as getting the rest of the clean grain underneath the dryers and um, shutting up the bins and stuff like that. I'll worry about it later. We're actually, we need to get this ammonia bar done. So that is, that is what I'm doing now. We have a major issue. Uh, Basically, they're saying, hey, we don't have supply of ammonia. So you guys probably are not going to get your ammonia on. So you better start now. Um, that's not good. That's really bad, actually. So we have got to get this thing together, and he's got to get it running. And hopefully the 305 just runs. Because if it breaks down, I mean, we're only going to be down to one tractor and we got to get all this stuff done with one tractor, which is really going to be bad. Anyway, he went ahead and rebearinged all these closing discs. That's all that really needs to go back on. Super simple to put back on. Um, <clears throat> won't take me that long. And then uh, we've got some drag chains that I thought might be a good idea. Might have been a waste of money, but hey, that's what I'm here for. I just waste my dad's money. Um... I kind of thought, you know, we were having issues where these closing wheels <clears throat> were kind of getting off just a little bit to where they were throwing, almost kind of digging. Like maybe they'd be sitting like this, going through the row straight. And uh, anyway, it would throw the dirt out of the strip. And you don't want that because then when you have a hard rain, you know, it washes in there and then you just get a trench. And uh, yeah, it's a bad thing. You can't plant into it. It's, it's just awful. So you got to plant kind of off to the side of the strip. And we were having to do that on a few of our farms because of the ammonia bar going through our strips. We don't want that. So I thought, hey, let's get a drag chain, you know, get it as wide as possible to kind of just maybe bring like a swath like that on the ground and just bring that dirt and fill in if it ever trenches. A lot of the times it doesn't, and our strips still look really good, but the drag chain should help. So I gotta figure out a way to mount this stuff. This, these might be a little too much weight, like Dad was saying earlier, on the closing discs. So, who knows? We got a little bit of work to do. These just bolt on super fast. He does have four where these dust caps um, are broken. Not really broken, but these little pieces are busted off of them, so I gotta tack weld those quickly. Um, I'll probably just weld that back on, but the rest of them, just a little tack weld here so that it can't fly off of there. Okay, let's get started. Oh, a little bit of hot chocolate first. Oh, that one went down the lungs. Ah, pretty good though. So here's all the hardware to put these back on. I'm going to go ahead and set these outside. And then he's got these marked uh, 23, as you can see. 2023 if he rebearing them um and then 2017 if he didn't those are the, the last time he did he rebearing them um i'm gonna go ahead and put i think he wanted the 23 2023s on the left side of the bar and then he wants the 17s all on the right side because he's constantly looking out over his right shoulder um, that way if something happens to them he'll see those first you all know how that goes one of the 23s will explode before the 17. So in my excitement to get this done, I almost forgot. I need to put the combine back in the shed. Not that it's going to rain or anything. We just kind of want it covered in case it does. Because, you know, you never trust the weather, man. 
Do you think I remember where the lights are on this thing? I think they're here. Uh huh. All are down. Parking brake set. Turn the lights off. Shut the key off. Okay. Boy, if there was one thing that I could wish for for Christmas and it would definitely come true, it'd be for a 400 foot by 800 foot cold storage shed where I could just throw, I could literally just drive in and park it and not have to maneuver things around, get it as tight as possible. I just wouldn't care. Okay, well, first things first, I may as well get this stuff welded. That way it all can just fly on, right? It all just goes so well no problems whatsoever. Okay, I'm not even gonna show you those welds because they look absolutely terrible. So um, we're just gonna get these put on. To be honest with you, I've had about three good welds in my entire lifetime. Problem is I don't do it enough. Practice makes perfect and I <laughs> am far from it. Okay, we have got all the tools, the discs, the uh, drag chains, hot chocolate, Kit Kats, of course, obviously. Uh, we should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and start on this one row in the middle here. Not for any particular reason, other than uh, I just need to find out how I want these drag chains to go on this thing, because I, I may want to tie them down with the disc. I don't, I don't know. You should go about like that, okay? And then I don't know whether or not I should do that. Kind of bring the drag chain down a little further. I think I want that. Give it some, a lot more ground contact than anything. At this point, you know, I can have these angled the way I need them. And then I think I just want to keep these chains low. Okay, how does that look? Bottom of the drag is right in line with the knife. These are slightly angled in, and I think I've got these correctly. I have no idea. Um, I think that's right. Basically, they came with these little loops. I just put the, I fed the chain through and then squeezed these as tight as I could and fed them through this little hole. And now they're kind of just hanging here. I I don't know. That's that's what I've seen anyway. Guys do. So I think that's how we're gonna mount it though. Could be a waste of time. This is how far they're down. This knife is touching the ground right now. Look how wide that is. That should be perfect. I mean, it's gonna be dragging back here, obviously. So you get that knife in the ground, it's going to have every bit of that much surface area while dragging. I think that's going to be about perfect. I'm going to call it a night. I got half of them done. Uh, there's some logistics we still got to go over yet. Uh, we may want some longer bolts here. I don't know. I just put them on anyway because it's not that big a deal to zap them out and put a longer bolt in. But if he doesn't, you know, then it's just done. Uh, but I got a few things to do in the morning yet anyway, so yeah, I'm going to go home, go to bed, get a good night's rest because I got a long day tomorrow running that strip tail bar. Hey, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.